Hey, what's good? What's going on with you guys? I'm back at you here with another video here at the homeless camps in Atwater in Atwater, California. I'm here sitting with Jeremy. Um, I've been knowing him for a minute. This is the second time we actually sat down and, and had a conversation, but every, on, on video, this is the second time we sat down and have a had a conversation. But um, every time we have a conversation, this this guy is always blowing my mind. He's a very intelligent guy, um, but I'll allow him to um, introduce himself to you. Hello, my name is Jeremy Michael Van Heumann, 26 years old. I'm from originally from San Jose, California. Okay, okay. So how long have you been in Atwater? 2000, May 2015, or yeah, May 2015. Okay. Okay. So, so, so what brought you? What brought you to Atwater? Ooh, <laughs> that's a long one right there. Well, long story short, you know, average lifestyle of a drug dealer, eight service, but you know, twenty-five. You know what I mean? Average life, you know what I mean? Because you start in young, you get out, you know, you usually die, you usually don't make it that long, you know, unless you're crooked, you know, like you're forty or something. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, I was, I, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I wasn't trying to live like that no more. I'm trying to live that lifestyle. I wanted to live a normal life. So I decided that because we were already getting evicted from where we were at, I might as well like come to Atwater because I didn't have to come to Atwater. Like I came here because my dad came here, mm -hmm. and I came here because I wanted to go somewhere where I started out fresh. I knew nobody, I had no connections with nothing. You know what I mean? I knew absolutely nobody except the family I was moving there with. And besides that, that's pretty much well. That's why I'm here now, talking to you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. So you have family that's out here as well? Yes and no. Because, you know, everybody has family that's not blood, you know what I mean? But, like, you know, like when it comes to actually, like, blood, blood, like, yeah, I do. But I, I, they, they, they don't get any acknowledgement from me as family. Like, they're, 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 they, they're the reason why I'm here talking to you, too, again. <laughs> you know, they're, 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 family's the reason why I'm here. Most people, most people think it'd be, you know, drugs or, or money, finan you know, financial problems, but, you know, fuck no. Okay. But it's, you know, it's one thing people most don't really see too often is family. It's like, you know, like, it's kind of, kind of fucked up, but fuck them, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I got my family, I got my street family, so, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. So, <clears throat> how long have you been homeless? For about... Year and a half after I moved here. Okay. Could could you speak up for me? Yeah. Sorry. About a year and a half after I moved here. Okay. Okay. So you said your father moved. You 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 moved out here first initially with your father. Yeah. Like because like I said we were getting evicted from the place we were staying, and even though they our landlords weren't like doing the eviction process right, you know what I mean? Like we, we stayed there for like like five six months after they gave us their fucking fake eviction notice because they didn't they're like they didn't know what the fuck they were doing, mm -hmm. and so. <laughs> yeah. I, decided, I finally decided, my dad finally decided, I guess he got a hold of my, my cousin named Aaron, Aaron Schmidt. Okay. He stays right there on Sunset, 7209 Sunset Drive, okay. right across the street from the school. Okay. He owns that whole little strip of property right when you turn on the Sunset, that first on the left side, that where that right where the orchard start, up to the canal, he owns that all that property right there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and like he's, 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 his whole life he's done... Not, you know he's he's done what he's doing you know what i mean like work he does he does he's not really like a like a social person he doesn't really go out in the world like he didn't even know what strictly text business kind of yeah he didn't even know what text messaging was wow like yeah i was dumbfounded when i found that out and like, he's like old school you know he's like old school and he thinks it's like he thinks it's like back in the days where you could just walk into a store and you know they have all the help wanted signs you know what i mean and it's like that to get a job you know like without a resume without a freaking phone or email you know like, nowadays you need that yeah. Otherwise, you if actually you do. don't have a resume, they're not gonna. They're not. You don't have experience. We don't want you. Yeah. There's no more paper applications. Mm -hmm. Nope. That went oh, out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, early two no. thousands. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you know, like, came here because he you know, decided to tell him. You know, he told us that we could uh, start uh, working on his property. You know, like around the, like the orchards or whatever, or like do like you know, like like. Whatever kind of freaking working he needed to do, because he does a whole bunch of different kinds of like crap over there at his place. And whenever we would get for our check, he would take the rent out, and then whatever would be left over, you know, would be like, you know, like for whatever, you know, for us, pretty much. Okay. okay. And, uh, 
yeah, that's pretty good. Well, him and my aunt. He and my aunt was doing too. But besides that, that's like the only family I really had. Never really besides the few cousins I have. Like, but other than that, yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> how was it? Do, were you were you in a single parent home or at first, or were you? Did you have both of your parents at first? For the first six months after I was born, my mom was there, but you know, of course, because she had to be. You know what I mean? But after it got to the point where you know I, I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't really need to be dependent on her, like you know, like to live pretty much. You know, you know she, my dad took her to cust, there to court fight for custody over me, and she didn't even show up to court. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's usually, uh, it's usually, the, it's usually the fathers in that position. It's usually not the other way around. You know what I mean? Like, but I found out why for it was probably a good reason because her whole side of the family is nothing but freaking trouble like nothing but like 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 bad trouble like nothing good okay nothing good so so how how was it growing up with the single father well to tell you the truth it kind of was i it kind of i mean i did have a, i was a single parent you know i only had a single parent i only had my dad but at the same time i had that i had this controlling freaking bitch ass sister that wanted to act like she wanted to fulfill the fucking spot, you know, the mother figure spot, you know, which you can't, you can't, I don't give a fuck, you, no. Yeah. You, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't the parent of the child, you know what I mean, who are you to tell you what's good for the child or not, you ain't the one to tell you, you know, that's that's up to the one parent that is there to make those decisions, you know what I mean, they have the say in it, but yeah. no, she freaking, it was all bad, she freaking made me dress how she wanted, how I do my hair and all this other crap, you know what I mean, like I had to freaking eat every day at a certain, at a specific time, 5.30 every day, wow. you know what I mean, I had to freaking like, yeah, it was stupid. <clears throat> Was there was there any abuse? At, did you suffer as a child? Physically, no. But Mental? mentally and emotionally, yeah, okay. damn straight. Of course, those are the only two freaking left. You know what I mean? Okay. The worst ones too. Like, I mean, but to tell you the truth, looking at anybody else that I know going through the stuff that I had to go through, I mean, I'm not saying that it was it was better or worse than anybody else's situation, because, you know, everybody goes through things differently, you know what I mean? Everybody takes things in differently, but uh, you learn from it, you know? And I, I definitely, definitely, obviously learned from it, because not having that mother mother figure person is, it's just, you know, most people growing up without a mo mom, you know what I mean? They don't know, you know, what it's like to have mom, they just wonder why mom's out there, they just not like a woman, you know what I mean? They're being violent towards women like me, on the other hand. Woo. Completely the other way around. Because, um, to tell you the truth, I guess I can thank my aunt for being such a, uh, a bee, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because if it wasn't for her isolating me for freaking like weeks at a time, like in my room, you know what I mean? Like grounding me you know, for stupid shit. Like every, every word I would say, I was I was arguing or I was talking back and everything I did was my fault. Nothing was ever her fault. No, she was never wrong about anything. Kind of explains why people nowadays like to think I like to argue. And I don't, don't like to argue. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> you guys have done. Yeah, understand. you're they gonna understand. keep up like, for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like, I, you know, I would be, I couldn't communicate with people on the outside world. I mean, I couldn't go out anywhere except for when I went to school. And then as soon as I got home from school, I had to call her as soon as I got home at work and make sure and to check in and she knew I was home. And if I was even like a minute, like a late past 3:30, whoop, I'd be grounded for the weeks. No TV, no, no freaking, no video games, no freaking, no phone. Just freaking paper, pens, music. That's all I had. That's all I had was that pretty much. I mean, I had TV, but not j just your standard, you know, freaking, what you call it, you know, basic, like, basic cable, or not cable, basic TV, you know, just regular freaking seven, eight channels. Okay. That's all so, I really got. So, so what keeps you from getting a email, getting your resume done? Doing the doing the doing the small things that could get you to the next level because every time I speak with you, I I can I can tell you're not the average guy that's walking down the street that's lost his mind that's um can barely respond to anything, especially if if you're having dialogue like me and you have great dialogue with each other. And well, it's it's answer. hard to realize that a person as smart as you are doesn't see the physical abuse that you're putting on yourself. Well, for one, if I was to put anything on a resume, it was only it would only be 
one job technically, and it wasn't even for that long. It was only for like half a year. It was with my, with the only job over the table, you know, regular <laughs> like legal job I ever had. Because other than that, I mean, I was doing actual work, you know, like I would be doing like 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 landscaping or fucking you know, like this or that or like ty like tight little little types of construction here and there, you know, for people, you know. What I mean, I get car paid car contract to pay, but I was getting I was getting paid under the table. Okay. Never had an actual job, you know. What I mean, like or most of the time it was either a I ain't gonna lie, I used to sell weed to people on the East Coast for 7500 bucks. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I got those for free. Yeah. You know, like, that's, if I needed money, I never had to. Like, back then, like, I, 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 worked, I worked my way up to where I didn't have to worry about it. Okay. And, like, it, back then, I'm not gonna lie, if I would have saved, if I were to have saved even, like, even 10% of the money that I used to see, the money that I've seen in the days and spent, and spent on stupid ass shit, I would be set. If I would say just even ten percent of that, ten twenty percent of that, I would be set right now. Like that, that that's how much money I probably wasted back then. But hey, what's what, you know what's the world without enigma, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, what's life without a challenge? You know, you gotta push yourself to challenges. You know what I mean? That's right. So, 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 what happened back then to get you where you're at now? See. That right there, that's a question I'm still asking myself. I'm still trying to figure that one out myself because it's like, why out water? Why out water, you know? It's like, if I really wanted to, if I really, really wanted to, I already know. It's like you said, you know, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, I'm not, I'm not conceited, you know? I might be confident a little bit, but you know what I mean? I'm not, not really, not really conceited though. When I say I'm smart, like I, I only say that because I know that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I know that for a fact. That's why I'm not, I'm not the smartest motherfucker in the world. I definitely don't know everything because there'd be no feature if people knew everything. You know what I mean, there'd be yeah. nothing to learn. That's right. So it's like, I don't know. I know, I just, like I said, I still answer myself that same question because there's like bits and pieces of things that, like, right now, as of recently, like, I mean, like in the past week or so, that are starting to freaking bring, are starting to, fit together with puzzle pieces, you know, in my, like, in my past, I still had questions with, and it's like they're fitting, the pieces are all just fitting together, it's like, you know, you get, it's like, it's like everything's just slowly just, yeah. so, so like puzzle pieces, you know, finish, you know, I'll never really exactly really, really know where, why I've been anywhere, really, you know what I mean, until I get where I'm at, right, or yeah. where I want to be, right? Yeah, Should that's be. true. So, so, how, how long do you think you can last out here, living the way you live? So the day I die, I know for a fact I can do it. If I wanted to. Don't want to. If I had to, come through it in the world, and the world goes into that kind of state, hell yeah, I know that I'll definitely survive. Because why? It's the homeless are the most toughest people out there, man. They're the strongest people out there when it comes to will, when it comes to spirit, when it comes to thrive, because they have to do those things every day. They have to have they have to have a good spirit every day, you know what I mean? To make deal with the freaking crap that people fucking make us deal with. And then, hey, I don't give a crap. Some of the most hardest working motherfuckers are homeless people because what do they do all day? Most of them. They either recycle or they do this or that or I ain't gonna lie, a lot of people probably do steal shit, but you know, it's like, you know, there, you know there's some people I know that freaking, like, that, like, fucking, like, rest in peace, like Kim. I like, miss Kim, man. Like, him, he was a freaking beast when it came to recycling. I'd see him turn in recycling in the morning and get, like, get, like, like, eight, like, seventy, eighty dollars and then three o'clock in the afternoon he'd be pulling in ninety dollars again like that. Like, nothing, dude. Just, like, nothing. Like, that, it's hard enough to make twenty dollars a night. He does that shit in one day? Yeah. Like, Twelve hours? You know, he, he, like, he's, he's a, a worker, man. he, it's funny that you mentioned him and, uh, he, he's a very, very good man that passed yeah, away yeah. in the homeless camp you guys um his yeah, name was kim and um may he rest in peace um in the ancestors arms um one day i i was i was headed to the gas station and me being lazy that's just all that's all it was headed to the gas station and i ran out of gas at the light and <clears throat> who do i see pulling up on the bike with the gas can with five dollars worth of gas in it. <laughs> Kim. Hell yeah. So Thank so you, that bro. that that's yeah. that's my Kim story. Um yeah, uh, when I yeah. tell you he's an amazing guy, oh, man. Yeah. He's uh, uh um he's selfless. He does everything so he did everything selfless. 
and um, I, I I would definitely love to meet his son one day if he had any children. I don't oh, know, yeah. he, but he, yeah, he I, I I would know. You know, um, I know, I know. I, the you apple know. doesn't fall too far from the tree, but um, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised the dif the difference when it comes to like appearances because <laughs> one of his sons don't look like him at all. He's working the hell tall. He's yeah, like that was taller than me. <laughs> He's white. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't look like, you know, like, yeah. you know, but hey, I don't give a fuck, but that's fucking, uh, fucking Yeah, he's a good man. Like Definitely West. a good man. Like okay. Definitely a good man. Um, oh, yeah. So, so Jeremy, man, I, I, I really want to know, man, because like I said, me and you, me and you have good dialogue, man. What, what keeps you connected to the streets? What keeps you satisfied with being homeless? Now that's a trick question. If you're asking someone else. Now if you're asking yourself, I'm not comfortable with the, with, with being homeless. It's not about the comfort, comfortability because, you know, home is where the heart is. You know what True. I mean? Like, True. me, if I had that one, if I if I had that one, if I had that one person right there, then it wouldn't matter where the hell in the hell in the world I was at or what state we were in, it wouldn't matter. We're there together is what would matter. Like that's that's one thing, you know what I mean? Like what keeps me connected here? That same thing. That same thing. Where my purpose lies, my true purpose, because I ain't gonna lie, everywhere I've been my entire life, naturally I've just been hated by people, like naturally, like people just don't like me for no, they just, we just don't, I don't get along with people for no reason. I'm the easiest motherfucker to get along with, I'll be the most trustworthy, most loyalist, most respectful motherfucker you'll ever meet in your life, or I'll be, you know, <laughs> last nightmare, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It depends on how bad you jack go, how people come at me, you know, I'm, yeah. not, gonna, I'm not gonna respond to somebody with, with, with kindness, kindness that yeah. comes me with an attitude or disrespect. Yeah. That wouldn't make any sense, yeah. That's disrespect. That's disrespect. Even my intelligence by coming at me like that, because it's like you know, it's like how, how the hell are you gonna? You know, it's just, it's just stupid. Yeah. I ain't lie. I forgot what the question was right now. <laughs> what, was what was it again? I I asked you. I, I man, I I actually forgot the question <laughs> because I, I I try not to I try not to have it script. I try not to have it scripted with you. You know, with with other people, I'll write down four to five questions that I'll ask them. But just yeah, because yeah, me and you, you have you good dialogue, right yeah, you know, I usually have my, you know, so yeah. just because me and you have good dialogue, man, um, I, I just like to let it flow, man. I like to let it flow, man. Oh, yeah, that's, well, um, that's, that's the best way to do an interview. You know what I mean? It's not, that's the best writers, man, come up with shit off top. You know, they don't freaking, they don't have, they don't have to think about it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. like their writer's block. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Yeah. It's like, like right now, like right now, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't plan on any of this. You know no, I mean? not freaking, at all. It was freaking a little bit before twelve o'clock midnight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ran into you at the gas station. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, we didn't plan on me. No. I didn't even see you. You know, and so it's like the best time, right? Yeah. Hey man. Hey man. And I and 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 I'm always. I'm always willing to help out one of my brothers, man. Like I said, I don't, I don't never look at race as a factor in any situation. I look at the need, and um, when it comes to a need, when it comes to the homeless, we are all treated the same. You yeah. know, you you might as well be an African American, right. and I'm not, and I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Um, I, uh, to offend people or to be disrespectful in any kind of way, but we know throughout the history of the world, African Americans have been treated poorly. And it's just real sad to see that just because a person is down on their luck, that they can't get any type of uh, assistance or any type of, um, yeah, just, just, just from, from your government. You know, yeah. but they're willing to pay for all type of crazy programs, and the money and the money never gets to where it's supposed to go. You know, so you know, I, I don't want to get too political with this uh, interview. But like I said, me and this, me, me and Jeremy, we always have a good conversation, and no matter his situation, I always see him with a smile on his face, 
and I can definitely say that, you know, at times you can learn things from somebody who you couldn't, you know, who who you yeah. would look down on. Yeah, you never, yeah, you never know when somebody that's freaking, you know, like 20, 30, 40, even 50 years younger than you might, it would be the one teaching you a lesson because believe me, I've had people twice my age, I've had people, you know, like three times my age tell me, they're like, Jeremy, you know, the, do you know what's wrong with this situation right here? And I'll go, no, what? And they're like, you're over here lecturing me about life. I'm supposed to be lecturing you about life. He's not like, well, well, what's, you know, it's like, you're like so old school, but you're ahead of your time at the same time. It's like, you're a contradiction. I'm like, well, yeah, the whole world is a contradiction. Everything's a contradiction. You look at it, yin and yang, contradiction. Yeah, Good yeah. Good bad, contradiction. Do, do, do you feel like um, living homeless is being free? Oh, I believe being free is doing what you love to do, you know, without any like worries or any like regrets, and you know, just doing what you love to do and being comfortable knowing that you're doing what you love to do. You know, I think that's great. You know? okay. Whatever it is your dream may be, or whatever you, you, you plan on doing for your future career, or you want, you want to do for the rest of your life, you're happy doing it, and you're free. And, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, it doesn't matter what that little piece of paper person says, you know, because that's all money is a piece of paper that controls your life. So you decide on how you spend it. Yeah. Stand on what makes you happy. That's right, man. That's right. Not what gets you forward, because what gets you forward is not is not being greedy either, you know. Because like you know, you can do this all you want for a week, you know, and have nothing to show for it, and then you can have that one person come up in a day fatter than you ever did. You know what I mean? So I say, what makes a true hustler, what makes a true baller, is not how much money they make, it's how they spend their money. That's what makes a true baller right there. That's what saying, honestly, and they see the dollar sign and everything. That's right. So, so what's what's the world's biggest misconception? that they have about the homeless? Okay. You know, you see that guy sitting there behind the trash can and an obvious clean sight, either freaking eating freaking needle in arm or freaking like sitting there hitting the pipe, you know what I mean? It's like, and then automatically the first thing that they think when they see all homeless people is that they're there, they're there because they do drugs or they have addictions and that's all they do is do drugs and that's all they're ever gonna do is have addictions. It's like. Well, it's kind of like stereotypical, you know what I mean? It's like, well, we can look at the, take one look at this no and say like, okay, yeah, he's a big piece of shit, but that's just an opinion. Yeah. You know, everybody has his bad opinions on the homeless. It's like, they need to really stay. It's like, you know, if you really got to know some of the homeless people, they're the most freaking like, they're like the best freaking, like, you know, they're the best people you can meet. You know, some of them, most generous, you know, most like that. Like you said, like Kim, man, you know what I mean? He's yeah. the first person I met here when I moved here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Genuine guy, genuine yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah, Makes man. me smile every time I think about him. Very genuine Fuck yeah, guy. Yeah, man. I fucking. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love him, man. Hey, it's Jeremy, like, this man. this was a great video, man. Um, I I I I I want to allow the the viewer um, inside inside of a world that that a lot of people don't have the courage or the, 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 the gumption to attack the way I do. Um, a lot of people that, that do this, they do it in the daytime. I do it in the daytime and the night. Um, I, don't, I, I, I always try to take it to a different, a different level because of, because of the need. You know, sometimes, sometimes you ain't able to catch people, and you catch them at night, and oh, yeah. they still, you know, right hey, man. Know. Hey. Nobody out. That's why I like witching hour, man. Perfect yeah. And, and no one out. It's quiet, silent. You don't get no traffic. You don't get no nothing. Yeah. It's just still. Yeah, man. And, like and, and, and at times, and at times, and I say this to say that at times, it, it can be real dangerous out here, you know? Oh, yeah. And people, and people like me youtubers that do interviews at night that um that that try to um do as much as they can you know not only just to help their channel out but to help other people sometimes you can be targeted so i would you know i i just want everybody to know that these videos that i do they they it's not it's not for the weak of heart you know so i'm putting my all into everything i do and I just ask y'all to subscribe and like my content. Please subscribe and like my content. I'm always hit you with the real, never the fake. I'm out, y'all.